What would you say is the average turnover time in a studio? I'm sorry, say, say that again? What would you say is the like average turnover time in a studio? Turnover time, that's what you said. Sorry. I didn't. Yeah, so like, um, let's say you got assigned to design this one character or this like series of characters. Mm-hmm. What? How long would they expect you to take for it? 17 years. Sounds about right. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're like, God damn it. <laughs> um, hold on. My mind is somewhere else right now. Give me no, one second. Can you, can you see my screen, by the way, guys? Yes. yes. You guys should be able to. Okay, cool. What do you guys see? You see a face, right? We see a, a face. Okay. Portrait. Portrait. <laughs> all right take it easy like continuity police um <laughs> so uh it, it depends the answer to these types of questions are always going to be it depends so the question is what what does it depend on oh man what the fuck kind of brush is this dude using okay um or is he using, oh, maybe he's doing something something clever? I don't know. Let me see something. I'm going to investigate while we're answering this question. So, um, oh, great. There's a video on it. Let's watch it together. Um, the, the question of, like, how long the turnaround is, like, it all depends, okay? So... If I'm working on a live action film, then the turnaround is usually really for a rapid. Because a movie um, usually takes, you know, it's only like two hours of film, and usually it takes about an hour or a year or two to make these days. And so they have to have concepts, they have to have shot, they have to shoot the actual action, they have to start creating the sets and the costumes and all that stuff within like a year or two. So concepts are like really rapid, like, like very, very rapid, like turnarounds are like in days, you know, maybe a week at the most. If that makes sense. Like they come in and right. say, Hey, you're designing this character. I say, okay, let's say it's Monday. I designed a character. I do several iterations that day that are all photorealistic looking. Then they look at them. They say, yes, number two. And then I package that and just send it out probably the next day. If they're a little bit more budgeted, they'll say, hey, you know, this is the main character. We, we don't want to spend a day. We want to really get this one right. So then that one might take a week, maybe even a month, you know? Okay. But it's it's a real fast turnaround. Uh, context number two, it's still live action, but now it's a commercial. So it's like a three-minute or like a 30-second thing or a music video, like a three-minute thing. The turnaround is negative one day. Like it should have been done yesterday. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Like you come in, they're like, we want this. And you're like, all right, great. And then you, they're literally like an hour later, like, you done? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so it's, it's real fast. But again, it's like forgiving the, 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 the quality because they don't really care. They just want like the idea. So they can start modeling it like, l- like literally that day or the next day. It's really rapid because usually they have like, a few months of production, right? Again, shooting it and making the things, right? Um, Video games, even in this, it's contextual. Like if you work for Naughty Dog, where they work on like a two to three year schedule, then you know you, you might have some time to really mess around. So things could be like the shortest amount of time to turn around a character or a design could be like a week. You know what I mean? Um, mm. But at most, like a month or two, you have quite a bit of time usually. You know, because if you're working for a big team like that, they will actually have other artists there too. And also there's a, the advantage of like working together consecutively. Like you're, this is like a team, you're working together, you guys are getting in a rhythm. That tends to happen, right? right. Uh, where a studio, you just jump in, you don't know anybody, you don't know the process, you don't know how everybody works and you just kind of like do a thing. That's why like people who are pretty good at mo- making movies usually use the same cast, same crew, everything. Like literally, like, like if you look at Tarantino, he literally has like the same like five people in all of his movies. Nolan, like, has, like, the same five people in all of his movies. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, literally, it's, like, recycles. There's, like, a really funny meme of, like, uh, I think The Dark Knight Rises where uh, Leonardo DiCaprio is, like, man, like, 
can you believe it? He's like bringing everybody on board and all that stuff. Like, oh, he's brought Tom Hardy in there. He's brought back, uh, you know, Michael Caine. You know, he's got uh, uh, Gordon Lovitz in there. You know, <laughs> it's got like all these people. He's like, what about me and you, man? Like, he didn't bring us in. And the other actor is the actor that plays Scarecrow. And he's like, I'm Scarecrow. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> he looks at him and just kind of like, fuck, you know? Because people forgot, like, he plays Scarecrow. It's kind of like, that's kind of the joke. Like, you don't remember until he says that. And then you're like, oh, yeah, that's right. He did play Scarecrow. Um, but it's like, you know, the point I'm making is that, like, directors do this. Like, good directors and good filmmakers tend to have the same cast and crew, right? Because they just trust them. But in, in, in production of uh, video games, you, you have that advantage. But also, you know, sometimes it can move too slow. And then you end up rushing towards the end. Um, you make a game and you think it's great. You release it. It's called Fortnite. And it's about building and squad-based gameplay. And then PUBG comes out. And all it's about is this battle royale system. And your game is filling, falling apart. Paragon's falling apart. You spend years, literally years, making these games. You're just kind of like, yeah. fuck, dude. All right, well, you know, we could probably make Fortnite look and play like battle royale but with building so that could be cool let's try that like let's just use that game mode it seems like a cool cool game mode and now your game is only known for that <laughs> you know it's not known for what it originally was made for right but but you see my point like that's the, kind of the downfall of like video game production is that things take a little bit longer right mm -hmm. like, technologies change like literally like the the same year sometimes and you're just like fuck dude. you know like imagine people who are building for the ps4 right now and then they just announced the PS5 and they're just getting wind of it like like everybody else. They're just like, yeah. what the fuck do we do now? Do we like up everything? You know? You know, unless you're like Naughty Dog, which they give them a heads up right now. We're making a PS5. So start making Uncharted 5 dude, right now. <laughs> you know? And they're like, all right. Yeah. And they're going to make it like when that trailer drops, it's going to look real. It's real life. Um, but you see, uh, it all depends. Right, because even in a game studio, some game studios like mobile games, they move much faster. Right, um, if you have a bankroll like Rockstar, then it, even though it's like five years, it still feels like you're working like if you only had a year, you know. So it's all it all depends where you're working, right, and what you're working on. But that's kind of the way you should think about it. Um, a good metric is to try to be able to pump out like iterations, like the quality that I expect people to do iterations in a day. Okay. That's, that is a good metric. Not fully finished drawings, not like really loose thumbnails, but like a kind of like right in between and being able to do like four or five of them in one day, then you'll be pretty prepared for most circumstances, okay? Okay. Um, it, it won't be easy. Like, like, like I had a student that took a job working on a movie and he was just like, whoa, this is like super fast, right? But he wasn't so unprepared for it. Like he had some understanding that he ha should have some speed, you know, that it was just yeah. hard for him. It was definitely a challenge, but he, he was prepared to take that challenge. Uh, and I had other students who worked for students that are like, oh, man, this is nice. <laughs> it's like nice and smooth, you know. It's just it's yeah. dependent on where and what you're working on. Yeah, well, I think that last part you mentioned probably should answer my initial sort of like question, as in like the four, five iterations to a decent quality in one day, but not finished rendering. Absolutely. Because I've got this, um, I was out there, like if I do end up getting a studio, I'm worried that I won't be able to work fast enough to what they need, that sort of thing. Yeah, and so so hopefully you're, you're understanding like kind of the principle of what I'm getting at too. I'm not trying to... Um, I'm not trying to say there's a, a catch all because even with like what I just said about like, if you can just do it all in, um, uh, what you call it, if you could do it all in one day, like that, that's just like a good metric of a quality bar that you should reach. Um, but then like yeah. also like being able to render it's like, yeah, almost, if you, if almost as fast, that. you should almost be able to render nearly as fast too. It's kind of crazy standards okay and so okay. it's 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 all dependent but like if you can just at least get iterations and at least you can render let's say maybe within a week or two then you you do have some mm. some hope to work for most studios okay 
Okay, I want to make sure I don't miss a skip step here. Uh, looks like he paints like paints like Chinese painters. <laughs> this is real sloppy, and then they clean it up beautifully. So I think he's using the smudge tool. Yeah, he's using the smudge tool. He's He's painting as if he doesn't know how to paint. <laughs> I'm not trying to insult it. I'm trying to um, understand. Yeah, trying to break down how he, his method would work. And yeah, because he, he, <coughs> made, he, he made that crazy. mark like seven times. Like, just fucking do it right the first time, bro. <laughs> so he's still doing it. Like, come on, man. Is this all real time? Is, it, yeah. is that bit of real time? So it took him about an hour and a half, yeah, and a half yeah. Which is reasonable. That's pretty pretty good. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty standard uh, Chinese painting, where they they carve their shapes with light forms or light values, not shadows. Most people do it with shadows, um, but he he and many other Chinese artists they do it with light. It's a, it's a traditional s skill too. It's not necessarily like a Chinese only. They, they just like they just do it and ramp it like this this is clearly what they're taught in art schools yeah this is why most there's some really amazing traditional drawings from those motherfuckers because it's a good strat so it's good it's good traditional like, foundations yeah sergeant did it too sergeant is also a man of, that did this okay i i did this uh a long time ago i just don't do it anymore so i think there's faster ways to do it but there might be there, there is some power to it. Okay, all this is you just... You this method specifically? All this is just clean up. Huh? Excuse me, Daddy. Um, Mom wants me to ask you if I can play Roblox after I'm done reading. Yeah, after I'm done teaching, Scooter. I'm still in the class. Did you hear what I said to her? Okay, thank you. <laughs> My daughter wanted to play Roblox. <laughs> all right. Yeah, not, there's nothing new after this. This is just more of the same. So really, it's like I had a suspicion because I was looking at, um, and I'm, my suspicions have been confirmed. Uh, looking at this without any other context, I was like, look at this crazy ass brushwork, right? And I'm like, okay, as someone who's painted a thing before, this is like, there's no way that this person was able to capture this textural look by painting with like one type of texture brush. So I was suspecting that they were probably drew it out and then built on it like, a, like any other painter does. Um, and the question I wanted to answer was like, well then how do they actually, um, like when do they start to throw on the texture? If that makes sense, okay? Mm. And so I found my evidence. But like what I'm saying is that like, if you look at another traditional artist named Sean Cheatham, he does this. So he constructs it through this beautiful, elegant way of drawing in the lines. And then he throws in all his values. This is the way that I like to paint. And then corrects it after the fact. Like the second image is all you need. Right? Okay. Like, so I skip this first one. I go straight to this one. You know? Right. So I need to find a way to like, to do that too, for this. Because this 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 looks amazing, and so it's clearly after the fact, after the fact, and he's painting on the same valued canvas. So you'll see here, like the skin tone won't be that much different than the background. So he is sculpting the character out from the background rather than what I would normally do, which is what kind of Sean does here too. So you paint the background in. Well, like just no, I actually will give my character value. Um, and there's there's reasons why this is good. This is smart strats. Um and I can elaborate. But this is this is how I think. This is this is a this is hopefully giving a glimpse into AJ's mentality when it comes to learning. Uh, this is how I learn. I analyze, like, aggressively. <laughs> yeah, the problem is that people don't do this. They just look and replicate. 
And then they are curious to why they don't understand how to paint it again. It's because they didn't understand how to paint it in the first time. They tricked themselves to think that they did. So there's a, there's a clear process here that I can steal. And it's specifically this texture. Think, and he's using a pen. When I first started, do you know Fenhua Zong? I think I Feng Zhu? No, no, no. Yeah. Um, uh, the, find it up. I thought you just really yeah, yeah. butchered Feng Zhu. <laughs> no, no, no. I know Feng Zhu. <laughs> Feng Zhu is like crazy good. Now this this is another sort of like a Chinese artist, and he paints like the way he, the way his paints are. They look very sort of that traditional Chinese or painterly look. But, um, I think when I basically first sort of got into this, I found this guy, and he's got this like. It's got these two really long real time painting. Uh, yeah, sure. Let me. I'll link him in Skype. So, like, the way you're describing, like, trying to figure out, uh, it's kind of what I did with this guy. So, he's got these videos on YouTube. There's, there's two parts that they're both, like, almost three hours long. But it's all real time painting. Uh -huh. And I remember watching this guy trying to figure out how he paints, and I uh, did some studies on him, like some of his stuff, and then I tried to replicate it with like other stuff as well. I don't. I recognize these last ones. Cool, man. Followed. I think I like this on Pinterest. Let's put this up. Quality <laughs> bar. Anyway, okay. So how am I going to go about this? Well, there's only one thing that I'm missing. I'm missing um, some of these brushes. Now, I, I have some. Now, this is not similar, but this is helpful. This one definitely is pretty close. But this, like that pattern, that like paper pattern. All right, so that's what I need. Paper texture so google paper texture images or maybe canvas texture yeah canvas texture is better maybe tiled so i'll have to tile it this looks pretty good let's go back to photoshop let's do some some things Put in there. Let's up the contrast a bit. Oh, look at that perfect arc. And then control click all that, define pattern. Canvas. Okay. And then let's come back here. And then let us open up the brush settings, go to texture, let's pick the canvas, yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, my evil plan is coming together, um, looks like he has a pretty big, but that's, that's nice enough, now, he has like this, um, uh, it's like really feathery. So this this might work, but let's let's try something else. So initial direction, nah. Let's do pen tilt. Pen tilt is what we're looking for. Why isn't it working though? Oh, it's because of the okay. So what I need to do. Yeah, this 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 might work. It seems like my pen tilt is just not working at all. Weird. Not sure why. Angle jitter, size jitter, pen pressure. Yeah, definitely not working. Weird. Not sure why. Maybe it's the texture. Let's see if I turn the texture off. No, definitely not the texture. Interesting. Something's going on. Let's do dual brush. Let's add some more. This brush is going to be super 
heavy, man. But he definitely has this kind of like, like it's really like really hard to get the texture in there. Oh, it looks like like thumbprints and stuff in there too. Dude, it's fucking fantastic texture. You gotta steal that texture, man. Gonna go to his house and steal it. Uh, I'm sure he might have these brushes available too, but it's all right. I like it better if I make it myself. Uh, can you guys guess why that would might might be an advantage? Why it's better to to make your own brushes? Pop quiz. I'm genuinely asking. So you can. I have no idea. Oh, someone started. Go ahead. So you can replicate something similar or understand how something similar works in the future? Yeah, so this the second part of that statement. It's the understanding, right? Yep. Like, I, I understand how this brush behaves, so when I'm using it, I'm not, like, surprised by the results, if that makes sense, right? When you're using someone else's brushes and you're like, oh, man, this is great, you're getting, like, some cool results, but then when you try it in some other instance, you're just like, why am I not getting those results? It's misguided, right? Is that feeling? Okay, let me let me go to my Pinterest. So, in my Pinterest, actually, I can probably just type in. I have something called texture and patterns, and I'm looking at like what he has, and I'm like, I think I might have some cool patterns that I can steal. Like this is pretty cool. All right, so then let's go back to Photoshop. Let's put this in there. We'll save that for now. Oh, look at that. That's pretty cool. So we might want something more. Oh, this is actually even cooler. Just steal. Steal these images. This one's taking forever to load. Open the image, a new tab. That's fine. We don't need it to be. Oh, actually, this is. Okay. Then let's do one more. And then I'll, I'll do a painting. I'm almost done, skis. This is dopes. Oops. A lot of these are dope. Whoa, whoa, hold on. <laughs> Steel. This one's much better. All right. Okay, so let's just go ahead and encapsulate this i would try to make a, a make it tileable you know what i'm, I'm just gonna do that. i'll do the other ones later um but essentially what i so that way i can show you guys how it would make it tileable um, but one thing is certain we need to kind of like balance this out a little bit so it's not so um so mismanage the values okay so then what we go do here is we'll go to other, we'll go to offset. It's a thousand pixels, this canvas size. So if I do a thousand, it's not right. So we want to do 500 offset and then 500 offset. I guess I need to do a thousand. Let's do a thousand and a thousand. Now it's still like breaking in the wrong area. So, oh, I did a hundred. That's why I'm cool. Still seems off. We want to try to get it in the center. Let's try 750. No, 500 might have been it. 500? 800? What's going on here? This is usually not that hard to figure out. 900? Okay. And then this one. 500? 700? 900? 800. Okay. Oh, you know what it is? Ugh, I'm stupid, but it's fine. It's because the um, it's sampling the whole JPEG. It's not sampling the canvas size. You need to crop this. So that way you do that. That's why it was being all weird, but it's all right. Um, and then what you can do here is you just clone stamp and try to get it as close as possible. So you just go here, you pick like something like that, and then you just kind of, Um, try 
try to get it in there. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just got to make some sense. Um, let's pick a different brush. This one's not good. Let's use this one. So all I really care about is that texture. Yeah, that should be good. And then we can just go ahead and define it here. It doesn't really need to be defined any off. So we can define pattern. Um, let's increase the contrast. And then let's define the pattern. Cool. Early. And then I had another one here. And then this one, we were not going to do that. We're going to just straight up just use it as it is. And this one will be a largely scaled tiled texture. So then there will be seams, but they will be hard to see. Okay. All right. So now. Let's go back to here. Let's let's do some test driving. See what we can get out of this one. Um, while I'm doing this, though, does anyone have any further questions? Yeah, I have one real quick. Yeah, go for it. Uh, I was wondering if there are any uh, like technical skills that you would recommend any uh, that most people develop for concept work outside of just like traditional painting all that like uh th any like basic 3d skills that kind of thing uh yeah you should you should learn whatever and when it uh you should learn whatever or whatever you can with the time that you have um a lot of times people spend um or they they'll like kind of have this kind of uh conversation in their mind about like what they can and cannot learn. And like they think about 3D as like a whole thing uh, and all this stuff. And the reality is that you should learn everything because um, you shouldn't learn like a lot of different genres. It's probably a better way to think about it. Like you shouldn't learn how to like do environments and all this stuff because that's a lot of extra work, right? But like you should learn how to do 3D, you should learn how to do photo bashing because those are just tools. Does that make sense? Yeah. It would be like if I took you to the store and I asked, like, let's, like, let's, let's learn how to do some concept design, you know? And you're like, yeah, I'm excited. And so let's get some tools, you know, so, so you can get started. And you're like, all right, great. And I take you to, like, you know, the, I don't know, just like the, the Michaels or something similar, <laughs> okay? And then I'm like, all right, let's, uh, Let's get some watercolors. Watercolors are a great tool, you know, to be able to paint like, you know, something that's a little bit more, you know, textured and all this stuff. It's a really good thing. I highly recommend it. And then like you interrupt me. It's like, no, no, no. I don't want to do watercolors. Like, I don't want to use that tool. Is there something else that I can use? I'm like, oh, okay. Well, let me show you some of these graphite pencils. Like really good because you can kind of get a mixture of values. No, nope, I don't want to use graphite. Oh. All right. Well, how about Copic markers? You should do Copic markers a little bit easier. You know, you can layer in the different values one at a time, and it's really additive, and it's really awesome. It's really a great tool. Nope. You know what? I only want to learn how to paint using my blood. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> that's like unreasonable. <laughs> why would you? Why would you want to do that? It's like the most purest of forms of painting. You know, you kind of see the the kind of like the. The point I'm trying to make here is people yeah, get a little yeah. too like like pretentious about like the process. If that makes sense. Yeah, I think I used to be a little bit like that with um round brushes when I first started out digital <laughs> painting like six years ago. <laughs> yeah, me too, man. Like I'm not I'm not saying that I'm immune to this this type of thinking. I just grew I just grew up. <laughs> is what I'm getting. Yeah. I realize that it really what you care about 
is like how to paint, like how to get good at like the actual the subject matter, not so much uh, how to like what tool, because then I, I because that that thinking changed everything, right? Because then I started to, um, I started to really uh, to focus a lot of my attention uh, on essentially becoming a uh, a good painter. And then I would learn 3D to become a better character designer. I would learn photo bashing to be a better character designer. I would learn whatever tool to become a better character designer. Make sense? Yeah. <clears throat> and that's that's really the best way to think about like learning 3D or or, or photo bashing or whatever whatever you're interested in. You know, uh, yeah. don't focus so much on whether it's like a standard or not. Um, there is there is a lot of advantages to learning everything. Um, but what I will say is like the, the meat and potatoes of your diet should be how to paint better, how to be a better artist. Right. right. And then you supplement it with like these little, you know, detours of learning 3d. But again, you're just trying to like, when I learned ZBrush, I learned ZBrush so I can make better characters, you know? Yeah. I didn't learn it because I was going to one day be a 3d artist, you know? I learned it because I want to be better a uh, better character designer. Uh, interesting enough, I'm learning 3D now in a real way. Like I'm really getting good at 3D at, on a production side of it, right? Because I do want to be a good 3D artist for game development in that context. See how that changes like the perspective? Yeah. Um, but outside of that context, I didn't really care. Make sense? Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Let me let me go ahead and save this. This would be a rake, rake texture, or no, this is a paintbrush, rake texture canvas. Okay. Um, I'm starting to <laughs> make too many brushes. <coughs> I need to be careful. All right, so maybe I can make something out of this too. Get real creative. Um, anyway, any other questions? Um, oh, I did want to make sure I know when uh, the next class is. <laughs> nope, just guess. <laughs> just keep showing up every uh, Wednesday and Friday and see if I'm there. Um, no, it's it is the fifth. Okay, June fifth. Yes. Okay. We're skipping next week. Um, right. Um. Yes, because next, because on Wednesday the 29th, I'm going to be on a plane, and then I won't be back till the fourth. So we'll be good. All right. Is that is that good? Make sense? Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah, this pen tilt stuff is really bothering me. What's going on here? I'm not sure why it's... Yeah, it's like not working at all. I wonder if it's because I don't have the graphic settings on. And you need to have that on for it to work. It might be that. Do you have a lot of trouble with Procreate pen settings? I was messing around with them and they don't seem to obey me when I use like presets <laughs> and then mess with them. Uh, no, I don't have too many issues. Maybe I just don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, that probably is more <laughs> what's happening. Um, it's, it's a different tool. You just can't, like, the problem that I think people are having with that is they try to treat, treat Procreate like Photoshop. It's just not Photoshop. And once you can respect that, you'll, you'll, you'll start to get some real value out of, out of Procreate. Um, it, it's just not Photoshop. It's a really good tool. I love it. I use it quite a bit. Yeah, there's a lot of things in there that I wish Photoshop had, just like ease of use stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I don't think I'm, I don't need this brush. All right. So let's let's do a painting now. Okay. So. Oh yeah, the softness stuff. I think he he just uses a regular old airbrush. I don't think he uses anything fancy. All right, cool. So, 
first thing is first, we need to construct a drawing. Okay, so, oh yeah, no, first things truly first, let's get a gray background. Um, if you have questions, keep them coming. Um, I was wondering, uh, you're mostly freelance, right? Yes, almost entirely freelance. Do you have uh, any tips for how to create and stick with the schedule or how to stay sane or keep on <laughs> doing your schedule every day? I don't know how to stay sane. Okay. So I'm working on that one. <laughs> um, the schedule thing is 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 uh, a good strategy that I've learned is just create a like there's a Google calendars. Okay. Yep. Well, the advantage that he might have too, I just realized that he might have actually have a model. I'm just drawing from my imagination here. So I need to forgive myself for any lack of quality. Sorry, I'm just talking to myself. There's an inner dialogue. So you guys get a glimpse of like how my inner dialogue might be. Um, yeah, Google calendars, using that religiously. And what do I mean by this? Well, like, I would like schedule a meeting or a, a get together uh, under the premise of like understanding that Google um, calendars will let me know like ahead of time. So, so for instance, um, I will just say, okay, I have a meeting this Friday. I'll write it down in Google calendars on the time that I need to be reminded, right? If it's really important, like I might forget or I need to like, have a heads up like the day before, I'll put a go, go, double a Google calendar the day before and the time before the, the, the essential meeting, right? Um, if I need to get work done, I will put it in the Google calendar. I used to use um, just like different kinds of task applications, right? You know, um, I tried all sorts of things and the Google calendar is by far the greatest um, version of all this, okay? Because it, it sends me alert, right? And I'm keeping myself accountable. Where the task thing, it's not a, it's, there's no real accountability to it, if that makes sense, you know? It's like, like I make a list of things I wanna do, sure, but do I actually do them, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but if I like, put it ahead of time that I need to do it, right? Then uh, when, the, when the calendar like goes off, I'll be like, oh shit, yeah, I have to go and do this thing. You know what I mean? And so uh, that's what really helps. Uh, but I, before that, I was really all over the place, right? Um, so having a calendar that is keeping me account, account, uh, accountable is incredibly uh, life-changing for me. Um, I think that people need some system in place to keep them accountable. And if you don't have one, that's it's time for you to figure it out, right? To try to like discover a, a system, you know? Uh, otherwise, yeah, you'll just keep like fucking up. And one thing that I would say too is that it's okay to like make mistakes. Like, so for instance, like when I originally would have a calendar, um, and then I'll like miss a thing or I'll move something around. I'll just like take note of like why I had to move it around. Do you understand? Like I'll, I'll say, okay, like I scheduled this thing for this time, but I obviously missed that. Why? You know, what was it that my optimism didn't foresee? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, uh, but like I tried lists, they didn't work. I tried, um, I mean, lists did work. They did, they did, just not, they weren't consistently working, okay? Um, so I, I just evolved it. It's, it's just, you know, like with painting, like you might try a process in painting one way and then the next day it's garbage, right? 
So then you just got to say, okay, something is, something is clearly not great and just evolve that, that process. Makes sense. And again, a lot of times people just don't do this type of stuff. People tend to get really caught up on, um, on just everything has to work the first time they try it. But as you've taken my class for quite a while now, right, you should understand and respect this, this opportunity to fail is, is totally fine, you know? And like, even when it comes to time management and accountability, it's okay to, to, to fail. Um, the problem sometimes may be with like, you know, art is that if you fail um, with art, you like, or with a job, I mean, sorry, not art, with a job, uh, you lose the job, right? Um, but sometimes that lessons, those lessons need to happen for you to really kind of take it seriously, like what the problems that you're running into. Make sense? Yeah, I've written a lot of lists and not followed anything on them. Yeah, again, like it's not that they don't work; they do. Um, but it's like if they if they're not consistent, then then you need to like reevaluate like why they're not working. That's all, right? Yep. Like lists work for me, but I have to put them on a calendar, and that calendar is attached to my phone, and I leave the notifications on, right? And so my phone will like. Brrr, like call me and I'm like, oh shoot, that's right. I have a meeting tomorrow. Like, have I gotten the work then that I needed for that meeting? Oh, I haven't. Okay, well today's agenda, <laughs> you know, is this thing, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of like thinking, oh, you know, like the day of finding out, like that I had to do it. You know, that's that's much, that's much more dangerous, <laughs> you know. Um, and so I just got really good at avoiding these these issues. Mm -hmm. Are there certain rituals or things you need to do when you wake up before starting to draw? Yeah, again, um, no, I don't do any of that stuff. I just, I just have reminders of tasks to do. I have like a family that is like always something wild is happening that I can never predict that far ahead, you know? So I, I, I created a, a system that's very reminiscent of like how I paint. Okay. Meaning like my approach to painting is very fluid, like my ability to adapt. Right. And that's kind of how my schedule is, if that makes sense. Like I've just tried to build it on foundations that aren't reliant on some sort of like really rigid rule set, if that makes sense. You know, it's it's more reliant on just my ability to get get work done um, when I am told to get work done. AJ, you have five minutes to, or not five minutes, sorry, you have like five hours to do a thingy, you know? Um, I can respond to that well, you know what I mean? Um, versus you have like an hour to sort this out. That I don't, it's much harder. And so um, the, the things that keep myself accountable, uh, the calendar is a good one. Um, what else is a really good one? Oh, man, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I push my contrast way more than this artist. So that's something to consider. Not, not in this case. That one's pretty hard contrast. Okay, so let's bring the softness in here. Um, Cause that's gonna really bring this home. He uses smudge tool, but I'm gonna try to avoid that. Um, because smudge is really unreliable. You can get some really good results from it, but it is incredibly unreliable. <clears throat> oh, not smudge, but painter, paint mixer. That tool is unreliable. Smudge is reliable. Got it mixed up. So. One thing that I will do, like a kind of like a, a, a ritual, is that I always will like do a thing. Like, like I want to get really good at painting fast. So then I will make sure that there's some time where I can paint fast, right? Like, so for instance, like maybe after class, I will open up my sketchbook and just draw for like an hour. This is something that I do almost every day, right? I always put like an hour into growth 
and always growth that is reflective to the, the larger goal that I have on my mind. Okay. So when I was learning programming, that's what I did. I programmed every day, you know, I programmed every day uh, for, for two years and I did it about two to three hours every day. And it was like mandatory. Even if I wasn't programming anything that day, I would just learn how to program, you know? Uh, this, this is great because it, it, it's, like, um, it's like a larger solution. Oh man, that brush is so dope. That's definitely, he's getting that from the smudge, that texture there. So maybe I need to find ways to make smudge more reliable. His smudge scale is way different. It's much smaller. And I think the brush too itself, the shape of it, I need to use this. Transfer, texture. Maybe make it more aggressive. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, this is way more reliable. <laughs> Unlocking the secrets. Oh yeah, oh, this is super nice. Anyway. Um, but yeah, long story short, I will always, I will do a thing that will make me better at another thing. And it's always context space. Um, does that make sense? So for someone like in your guys' position, it would be like maybe like practicing values or anatomy, something that's very specific to your goals as a character artist, character concept artist, you know? Um, but it's not directly related to your actual immediate tasks, right? But it, it is indirectly at attached to them. Yeah? Yeah, so this is a pretty good study. I need to save this much brush before I get too caught up. Um, soft mixer canvas. Okay. And then <laughs> my daughter here. You're not the boss of me. Yeah, this approach, I forgot how powerful it is. I'm out of practice, so I can feel it. I did this a lot when I worked on God of War, this approach. Which God of War did you work on? Ascension. The worst of them? <laughs> PSP or? No, it's the, it was for the PlayStation. Okay. I think it was PlayStation 3. Yeah, it was the worst of them. Um, it's not saying that it was a bad game. It was actually a great game. It was just the worst of the God of Wars. <laughs> you know, the, uh, the God of Wars uh, games are all really good. It's really hard to keep maintaining that quality. That's all I'm trying to get at. Um, uh, I don't very samey on the PlayStation 3 or? Yeah, that, that's my point. Like, it's still like, if it was like the only one, it would have been a great game. Mm -hmm. But in context of like the other God of Wars, it's, uh, in my opinion, not the best. Um, the only thing that saved it were my designs. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. It was, it was still good. I liked it. Uh, my favorite one, um, before the, the latest one that came out, my favorite one was um, uh, God of War 3. Or, I'm sorry, uh, God of War 2. Because even God of War 3 was like graphically better and had a lot of cool stuff. It was just, like no match for God of War 2. God of War 2 was so good. And then, uh, and then God of War, Data War came out. 
the latest one. That Sweet. one's for sure. Amazing. That one's the, definitely the best one. Data yeah, World's gonna be like uh, in the history of games, I think. Yeah, that one's definitely the best one. It's a good game, yeah, like in just general. It's not just like a good God of War game. It's like a great game. It's really good. Hits all the right notes. Yeah. All right. Any last questions before I go? Hope you guys enjoyed the study. I got a career advice one if it, if you'd be up for it. <clears throat> no, nah, I don't know. Okay. Next time. <laughs> next time. Next time. In our next life, dude. Yeah. No, but I got a I got a phone I had a phone interview yesterday with ILM in Vancouver. Oh wow, nice. Uh, but like it's 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 for like a junior junior position. So basically it's like an art assistant position. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so it's like that's why I'm like I'm still like on the fence for it. And I'm supposed to go for the interview with the art directors uh next week. But like I like on one hand I'm like hmm do I hang out with our artists all day but I do their dirty work or do I stay with my current job right now where I can work two to three days a week and I can paint the rest of the days right uh yes yeah. this is this is interesting yeah so uh I I would ask you one question like what are the daily duties like exactly explicitly can you explain them like from, from the job yeah it's like literally like like <clears throat> doing research and organizing and, and setting up for presentations and all that. So like I'm basically the art department secretary at that point. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Like they yeah. said, like w one of the criteria was to have a strong portfolio to get in, or like a, a, a portfolio in general to get in. Because yes. they said that eventually they'd like to bring that person onto the concept team. But it's like, how reliable is that fact? And, and how much time would that be possible? You know what I mean? So... But yeah, it's basically the art direct, uh, the art department. How, how long would you be doing it for? They said a year. Hmm. Yeah, I, I would need to know more details. Yeah. But I will say this. The, the pros is that you're going to be surrounded by potentially other great artists. And that, that is priceless. Yeah. Okay? Even if yeah. you're not drawing all the time, but just hanging out with like, if you're hanging out with monsters, you're, you're going to learn a lot. You're gonna, you can ask some questions potentially every once in a while, hang out with them at lunch, potentially. Mm -hmm. If that's, if you're social enough to do these types of things, <laughs> there's a lot of value in that. Um, but I, I can tell you that if you're not drawing as often as you would, you're, you're not going to grow, even if you're getting great advice. Exactly. Okay. Um, so if you take this job, it, it, it will be very clear to me that you would need to step up and draw on your own time more aggressively mm -hmm. okay uh you would need to do like lunch time drawing sketches these types of things you need to like be a part of this type of stuff all the time okay and um and just take as much information as you can from these these folks yeah um <clears throat> so that way if you do build a good portfolio by the end of the year you can show it to them and maybe that will pull pull through but one of the reasons why this might not work is because people say this, but like if you become really good at being the art secretary or whatever, exactly, they need that person. Now, there's <laughs> a reason why they hired you, right? They need that role. So it's really hard to necessarily like just like have someone that's pretty good at it, learns the ropes, and then just like have them switch because now they lose that position and now they need to replace that person and potentially train them all over again, you know? That's why there's like this kind of saying of like if you want a promotion, you have to quit. You know, like you quit the job you're at and get hired somewhere else. Yeah. 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 And so, so there, there is merits to this fear. So the question is, are you going to be able to do that? Okay. So, okay. I'm just going to go that this is going to be like a learning experience and I'll learn a lot. And I want to go in with the like worst case scenario. I'm never going to be a concept artist for these folks. Okay. So I'm just going to learn how to become a concept artist by hanging out with the concept artist, seeing how they do the concept art, just look at their artwork stuff that no one else will see for years you know and just study the fuck out of it yeah and that's something you could totally do and reasonable and then you can apply for them or you can apply somewhere else and just go somewhere else right and then just say you worked at ilm just hide the fact that you were the <laughs> oh what did you do ilm oh i you know, <laughs> the brew around and the <laughs> <laughs> yeah just hide those facts but you see my point though like yeah. you, could totally, you could totally you can turn this into a win you know 
Yeah, that's um, a, that's that's the big dilemma. That's like I can, but like, or I can just paint four days a week right now, like eight hours a day easily. Yeah, grow from there and then potentially get a honest concept art job in the next yes. year or so. You know. Yes, that's totally totally reasonable as yeah. well. And like so I'm moving, I'm, I was planning on moving to Montreal next year, so it's like there's a lot of game students there. So, so it seems to me like you know, uh, if you don't have to take this opportunity, then maybe don't. Yeah. Right. Um, be like thanks, you know, but I really am looking to be a concept artist, and as much as I would love to like help out with all this stuff, you know, I, I want to make sure that I I am working towards what I really want to do, you know. And I, I'm, I'm almost as sure that we'll learn a lot from hanging out and, and doing all that stuff. But um, I really want to just focus hard and become a concept artist, you know? So, like, maybe the next time we have this conversation, I'll be going for a concept art position, not just as our position, you know? And then, yeah, and respectful. Be very respectful yeah, and, yeah. and thankful for the opportunity. But, like, just let them know. Uh, or if you just decide, you know what? No, I'm going to definitely try to go for this, you know? Uh, then take it but then also be try to be very clear with them like these are like i really want to be a concept artist and i understand that i'm not good now you know and i understand or not good enough now um but this is what i'm working towards you know i would love to just make this a reality you know Mm -hmm. um but yes absolutely um your 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 predictions of like how to think about this are right i worked at a studio making like crappy games um so all my portfolio was making crappy game stuff you know <laughs> i literally when i because the job ended up falling out and i got laid off i realized that i had nothing in my portfolio that i was proud of and so then i had to r- literally build a whole new portfolio it was a good eye-opening moment um and it's reminiscent of what you're you're about to potentially go through yeah okay? i feel like that's why it'd be more beneficial to just like sit down and create a kick-ass portfolio Mm-hmm. Opposed, and, and like in a couple months opposed to in a year you know what i mean yeah yeah and or just keep on building because even within yeah. a year if you keep building your portfolio yeah there's a really good chance that you have a good one yeah or a better one and actually start it because even if you start at a smaller studio doing junior level concept art at least then then you're like doing concept art every day exactly because exactly. i was doing concept art um for the shitty company but at least it was concept art i was still practicing my painting i was practicing my care i just didn't like any of what i did for mm-hmm. them and so i just redid it but i it wasn't like i was doing graphic design and had no understanding of how to do characters you know i've done it for years but for like like you know nail polish games and stuff but i was practicing how to paint characters you know like real cool characters oh uh, well and then i just needed or not real cool characters but just characters in general i was learning how to paint them well and then I just needed to paint cool characters. <laughs> That's that was the problem that I was running into. Anyway, cool. Well, thank you. Yep. All right, y'all. Gonna roll out. Hope you guys had a good lesson. And thanks for letting me move the class over. I appreciate that. And then I'll see you guys in about a couple of weeks. So work hard. Take this uh, time and take advantage of it to really practice, train, study, and uh, get the most out of this extra time we have. And then I'll see you guys when I see you. Make sure you send a link on your Facebook or something. (laughs) Yeah, I'll actually send you the link to the websites to follow. Uh, In fact, I'll I'll kind of talk about it right now just for a second. So this is the, right here in Skype, uh, is the, this is the the event. It's limits. So this is where it's at. Um, I don't read Japanese, so I don't know (laughs) what to look at. Okay, I'm, I'm assuming I'm on day two. Let's see if uh, you can see. Uh, okay. They don't have my name here, so I have no idea. You said you're a special guest, right? Yeah, I'm the wild card, but I'm supposed to go against somebody. I think I'm supposed to go against Aki and Iko. That's what my uh, coach or my sponsor was telling me. And I was like, all right, cool. And he sent me videos. He's like, train up. You know, <laughs> these people. And I'm like, all right. Um, uh what was i gonna say oh yeah so then there's that so then there's also paint one this is the english if you follow them on instagram or even follow me on instagram i'm gonna try to post as often as i can but definitely them um they are the ones that are i'm like representing i'm going like as the american division Mm -hmm. and so this this is their thing so 
Yeah, I was looking at that the other day. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so this is this is the places to go. Okay. Um, but with that, I'll see you guys when I see you. If I see you online, great. I'll talk to you guys. I'll stream. Uh, I'll uh, I'll I'll maybe paint something to say what's up to my students, <laughs> so you guys can say, oh yeah, do this. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe I'll just focus on the competition. It's only if I'm like dominating. If I feel like I'm clearly like destroying, then I'll get cocky. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'm gonna be super focused on winning and doing well. And so, uh, with that being said, though, talk to you guys later and uh, cheers. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.